the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Pastor Steve family, do I? Let me just welcome Apostle Joshua Selman. Come on. Praise the name of the Lord. Um, it's my joy to be here, and I want to thank you. Hallelujah. I believe, I believe in what God is doing. I am here first and foremost in honor and to honor our father, Pastor E.E. Adeboye, and our mother. This is why I'm here. And then, secondly, I am here to bless and honor your pastor, Pastor Leke. He's a man who really, really loves the Lord. And thirdly, I am here because I love every one of you and I believe in what God is doing. I really do. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We have but a brief session together and I'm going to request two things before we sit number one I want to request that your heart be opened every moment in the presence of God is a moment of destiny hallelujah in Genesis chapter 28 the Bible says how that Jacob came to a place called Luz and he had an encounter he lay to sleep and he had an encounter angels ascending and descending but he was not sensitive when he got up in the morning here's what he said he said the lord was in this place and i knew not the next thing that would happen to jacob was that he was in the house of laban and his insensitivity cost him close to 20 years genesis 32 god would come again the second time this time around he was prepared he dismissed his wives his cattle the bible says when he was alone then a man came and this time around he held him he said leave me for the day break it he said i will not let you go unless you bless me then he says what is your name and he says jacob he says thou shall no longer be called jacob but israel for as a prince you have had power with god and you have prevailed he touched the whole of his time he blessed him and he called the name of the place Peniel the face of God I have seen God face to face and my life is spared I know that we've been having wonderful moments and your pastors and leaders have laboriously gone through bringing people speakers after speakers but I want to tell you to pay attention to this brief time we have together because I believe that it is a time, a moment of destiny for someone here. Amen. Hallelujah. Are we in agreement on this? So in one minute whilst you're standing, I'd like you to passionately cry to the Lord. Give me a visitation. Give me an encounter. Go ahead. Passionately. Let it be from the depth of your heart. No distress. Looking around. 
set your eyes on Jesus and pray that's how much he loves you that's how much he cares Someone is praying. Just as I am, empty handed, but alive in your hand, singing my majesty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I, listen please. I truly believe with all my heart that standing or sitting in this place this morning um, are a representation of the people that will receive the baton of what God is doing across the nations of the earth. I believe this. I believe this with all my heart. Number two, I also believe that in Satan's scheme of attacks, these are the major people that his attention is at. Why? Because he knows that if he can do something to you, he has destroyed the next 30 years of the church. The next 40 years of the church, Satan is very intentional. He can handpick a generation and frustrate the purposes of God over their lives. Many of you here, you have seen it in dreams. You have seen it in visions. Prophecies have come to you that there is, you cannot afford to disappoint the generation God is raising you. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5. Please give it to us before you sit. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5. 
this was a conversation between a young boy jeremiah the one who you would later call a great prophet he said whilst you were in your mother's womb let me just let me just turn there jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5 the young boy jeremiah he says before i formed thee in the belly i knew thee and before thou camest forth out of the womb i sanctified thee and ordained to ordain means to legitimize an operation i ordained you to be a prophet to the nations and many of you when you read verse 6 many of you are about to make the mistake of jeremiah he said ah lord god behold i cannot speak for i am a child and verse 7 but the lord said unto me say not i am a child for thou shalt go to all that i shall send thee and whatsoever i command thee thou shalt speak he says be not afraid of their faces for i am with thee to deliver thee saith the lord then the lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth and the lord said unto me behold i have put my words in your mouth now this is god speaking to a child he says see I have this day set thee over nations and over the kingdoms to root out, pull down, destroy, throw down, to build and plant. Why will God give a child that mandate? So many of you may think, oh, I'm still growing, I'm still trying to get my life together, maybe schooling or doing one thing or the other. And the Lord is saying, no, you are that chosen seed. That I have raised for such a time as this. Are we together now? It is important for you to realize that everyone here has a divinely ordained destiny in Christ. Most of our fathers today are fathers of faith. And our grandfathers of faith, they started with God early. There is timing. Timing is a serious issue when it has to do with the matters of destiny, the matters of the glory of God. He says, O oh God, thou art my God, early will I seek you. Early, there is timing. Please be seated. God bless you. Honor to be here again. I just thought to challenge our hearts along the lines of something that the Lord put in my heart Acts chapter 13 and verse 36 I truly celebrate the entire RCCG and the, the sacrifice and the labor and the intention that is being invested to build the next generation of leaders you see one of the strategies of Satan, Acts chapter 13 and verse 36. One of the strategies of Satan is to plant a seed of negligence in those who are part of the current move of God so that the system of succession and continuity is ignored. And this is what has happened world over. When you study Bible history and the history of the moves of God, there have been mighty, mighty moves of God across almost every continent. But the reason why these moves of God seems to fade out with time is because usually those who are in the current move of God, the epicenter of what God is doing, if the devil does not succeed in pulling them down, and getting them to abort that project his next port of call becomes their seed have you wondered why the children of pastors go through about the greatest attacks it's not because they are bad it's because there is prophecy upon them are we following now it is important for you to understand some of these principles acts chapter 13 and verse 36 
just a moment and let me turn Acts 13 it says for David can you see it is it projected let's read together one to read for David uh -huh, after he had served his own generation by the will of God fell asleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption please look up the bible if you read i think amplified or there is a version that says david served god in his generation it's important to serve god but it's important to begin to to know that the service of the kingdom is generational please look up please look up There is an allocation of a generation given to men to represent the purposes of God. No matter how anointed I am, for instance, no matter how blessed God has helped me, I am not sent to the generation of our fathers. Are we together now? Even if I, even if I lift someone from a wheelchair and pray for all our mothers and fathers, 70 60 80 years they love me they will appreciate me as a wonderful son but there is a voice that was raised for that generation you have to understand this god operates generationally and the way that he operates is that he raises a people to grow with that generation our father in the lord papa Ia deboe he grew with his generation serving the purposes of the kingdom and today, even in old age, he still remains a veteran of the gospel, being faithful, serving that generation. But our generation and the generations that come after us, there must be men and women, a generation that lacks the voices that represent the purposes of God is the generation that will perish. And that is Satan's singular assignment to find out all those who have the prophecy upon their lives to be the representations of the voice of God as far as a generation is concerned. And he will handpick them with uncanny accuracy and destroy their lives and can leave that generation. That's why I said gathered here today are men and women who you are here today as proof that there is prophecy upon you. You are here today as proof that God literally handpicked you. Some of you probably would not even have made the conference. But God orchestrated that you be here. Do you know why? Because for every one of you sitting down, there are destinies that are praying. And can I tell you something about manifesting destiny? Every time you delay, someone pays the price. Every single time you delay. The nation of Israel was to spend only 400 years in captivity but one man's training because of the delay in that training 30 years were added to their captivity and so i'd like to share with you very briefly standing in faith and partnership with your leaders i want to share with you the keys to influencing a generation we're talking about the manifestation of the glory of god if we want to see continuity to what God is already doing first in our CCG and then across the body of Christ, merely wishing and hoping that things would continue this way will never happen that way. There has to be an intentional approach to continuity. There is a key and I want to share with you that key. Our fathers, you see, held onto certain principles and certain ordinances that kept them thus far and we cannot afford to lose the keys that help God to do mighty things with them how can a man rise how can a people rise from their lowly estate and consistently be elevated by God to a point today that they become global voices across the earth I share with you this key and if you pay attention to what I'm teaching you Believe me, number one, you will never be small. Number two, you will do so much for the kingdom within your lifetime. Are we best? The first key, if you want to influence your generation,
this applies to all ages all races regardless gender regardless territory key number one you must have a genuine encounter with the God of the Bible please write it down the first key to influencing a generation the first key to manifesting destiny more than education more than secular enlightenment you must have an encounter with the God of the Bible Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32 the B part I'll quote it quickly for time it says but the people that do know their God their God they shall be strong and they shall do exploits not the people who are the inhabitants of the earth it is those who encounter the God of the Bible huh. you are my God that must be your testimony that you are my God how can I call on your name and end up in shame no way no way for you are my God Moses as a young boy pay attention Moses had the destiny of a prophet and a deliverer but as a young boy who grew up in Egypt he was taught Egyptian Scientology he was taught witchcraft and all kinds of things but when it was time for Moses to answer the call of destiny the Bible says one time he was at the backside of the mountain tending his father in lordship Jethro Every time God is ready to use a man, God will create something that must draw your attention. Moses saw a bush that was burning and yet not consumed. And the Bible records that Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight. When God got his attention finally, he said, Moses, take off your shoes. You know what your shoes are? Your shoes are a summation of all your experiences and your ideas that you think God is. He's saying, Moses, do not think I'm like one of those many gods in Egypt. I am not one of them. Take off your shoes. I want to reintroduce myself to you. An encounter with God. If you do not encounter God, the God of the Bible, when you stand before Pharaoh, he's going to ask you who sent you. You must be able to tell your generation who sent you. Can I tell you the destinies you have been assigned to lift and change, whether in business, whether in ministry, whether in politics and governance, there are spirits that will ask you, who sent you? I am a pastor. I want to lead people from darkness to light. I want to show people the way. Who sent you? It is dangerous to not know who sent you. Moses said, Who shall I tell Pharaoh has sent me? And God said, That's a good question. I am that I am. I am has sent you. Go and tell Pharaoh to search the archives of witchcraft and everything in Egypt. Is there such a God called I am? You know what I am that I am means? Because you see, the gods of Egypt were not all purpose gods. They were gods that were designated roles. They were in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Before he created heaven, he was still there. Before he created the earth, he was there. He says, Moses, you are not standing before a God who needs support. Other gods need other supports to help them to work as a team. But this is God Almighty. And Moses said, I didn't hear this. They didn't teach me that there was such a God. They taught me that if you needed your crops to grow, go to this God. If you needed weapons of war and strategies to win, 
go to this god if you needed fertility go to this god but what kind of a god is this that is everything he's called i am that i am listen it was on the strength of that encounter he says now that you've met me go and tell pharaoh i am has sent you moses i hope you know that the dead pharaoh was his half brother Ramesses. moses was being trained to be the next pharaoh in egypt now moses gets back into egypt and everybody's looking at him you were once here over 40 years ago now he comes with a staff and says pharaoh thus saith the lord god of the hebrews i bring you a word as a savior over my generation let my people go and pharaoh laughed he said moses i see that you've been in the wilderness for a long time you do not know that this is the center of witchcraft and he says janus jambers come throw your rods moses threw his rod it became a serpent and pharaoh said you can't convince me with this when they threw their own rods they were all serpents but a miracle happened the one who has control over time and matter how do you swallow two serpents and don't increase in size there was a statement there he picked them up and it still became one same rod no increase no nothing and pharaoh said wow this is interesting i will research i will find out what happened but i'm not convinced after nine plagues and the tenth one pharaoh came to a point where he acknowledged finally that there was a god in heaven and an exodus was declared and again they stood the red sea before them the egyptians behind them and moses by the leadership of the spirit on the strength of that encounter used that same rod and parted the sea can i tell you this especially for those of us who god is going to be sending in ministry the days that we live in right now it is risky to stand on the pulpit and preach about a god you do not know you can read books about that god you can attend seminars about that god you can even have names of that god reading about me does not mean you know me you have to meet me to know me isn't it amazing that among everybody in this place if your brother or your sister or your father or your mother calls you you will recognize their voice immediately think how many people you talk to per day and yet you do not confuse the voices because you know them listen to me my brothers and sisters the labor and the passion to know and to seek god and to be known by him is the number one key to influence a generation just having a mere desire to influence a generation does not mean that you will successfully influence a generation you will have to give them from the overflow of who you are and that encounter my life today i thank god for the honor and the privilege that he's given me to bless the nations and to serve the purposes of god within the context of my generation but let me tell you something it did not start with a desire for preaching listen carefully it didn't start with a desire for fame it didn't start with a desire to be known it was a sincere desire to know him when i had an encounter with the lord jesus christ some of you have heard my story when the lord jesus christ appeared to me i saw him my god this is the god that the bible talks about there was jesus standing before me and i was like a dead man I know what happened to Isaiah today when I sing to him I'm not singing a special number I know today when I tell you God is real it is not just a mere empty talk it is true are we together we have several options in this generation today there are many things when you say God God means many things it's important that we have an encounter with the god of the bible for some people god means some idol somewhere for some people god means some formula somewhere for some people god means their mind for some people god means their wealth 
for some of you god means it for some people god means social media let me introduce to you again that this god we are talking about so that there is no confusion is the king of kings the lord of lords let me reintroduce to you the god of the bible the god of the universe he became a man but he is the god of the bible understand what i'm saying there is no other name under heaven given unto men oh there are big names i know there are names of kings there are names of inventors there are names there are names of intellectuals there are names of individuals who have gotten nobel Prize. No, and we salute them but let me tell you there is a name hear me ladies and gentlemen the name that has been exalted above every nation above every king above every kingdom the name of jesus the one who has come today as the express image the image of the invisible god Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Your name, your name, your name, breathe. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Now listen carefully. Why am I telling you that you need an encounter? Beloved people, listen to me. The level of distraction that we have in our world today has never been before now. There is everything clamoring for your attention. The social media is there desperately calling for you. Nothing is wrong with these things in themselves. IT is there desperately calling for you. The desire for fame is there calling for you. All kinds of suggestions in our world today. Can I tell you this? When you want to serve the purposes of God, you must choose you this day whom you will serve. You have a choice to say, I'm not interested in you. I'm already an IT person. You have a choice to say, I'm not interested in you. After all, I came from a Christian family. I am a pastor's kid. I'm a, a, a seed or, or, or a child. I'm a pastor's... Um, uh, 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 I, I inherited ministry from my father. But can I tell you the truth? When it has to do with the matter of God, it's not a, just a family affair. It's an individual affair. You can know the God of your father and your mother, but he must become your God. Another man's salvation will not save you. You will need to stand before him and make that declaration i'm speaking to people here that i perceive by the spirit some of you love the lord with all your heart but there have been distractions around your life some of you this is not how you started with god when you started with god you watched your parents love the lord and passionately pursue him but when you went to school sincerely speaking and and from a well-meaning heart all kinds of options and distractions began to come and today when you say God many things come to your mind but within these few minutes that I have it's important to reintroduce to you the God we are talking about you want to bless your generation you must know God the God of the Bible whilst you are standing here in one minute I want you very quickly to make a declaration and say God reveal yourself afresh to me again go ahead and pray reveal yourself afresh reveal yourself afresh reveal yourself afresh reveal yourself afresh When I met the Lord, it changed my life. Hallelujah. 
please be seated let's just walk with time i have a few more minutes so number one you must have an encounter with the god of the bible regardless religion regardless race regardless your sociological orientation you need an encounter with the god of the bible number two you want to influence a generation the second requirement is that you must be transformed please write that word down you must be transformed what is transformation let me define it for you transformation is the name given to the process that makes you become like christ in experience you must be transformed transformation also means sustaining a superior belief system please everyone shout it after me say belief systems one more time say belief systems now look up please a belief system is a mindset is a sustained thinking pattern you will always be a victim of your belief system if your belief system is superior and consistent with that which makes for a great destiny then you can be sure that your destiny will bring honor to the name of the Lord many of us here love the Lord sincerely but we have not learned the roles of our minds and our belief systems you see we come from different cultures we come from different backgrounds we've gone through different experiences but when God is ready to use you he has to work on you belief systems for instance sociologically speaking please look up everyone we come from an environment where there are certain things that seem all right but when you come into the kingdom God must culture your understanding and your belief system our world today sadly is built on greed is built on selfishness it doesn't matter what happens to anybody once I am fine I'm okay when you come into the kingdom you begin to learn the law of love you begin to learn the law of unity it is all right according to the world system to be corrupt to steal to cheat to do whatever it is but when you come into this kingdom you understand the nobility of dignity you begin to learn all of these virtues you need a superior belief system to be able to change your world you cannot change a world that is like you you have to be higher than the system to be able to change it let me repeat myself you cannot change a world that is like you in terms of thinking and mindsets you have to be higher than that world higher than that generation are we blessed and for those of us who have had the privilege to travel around the world some of you here have come severally or have come from different nations and have had the opportunity by reason of the opportunities that God has provided for you to be outside of this environment outside of Africa you must be careful the things you imbibe listen to me westernization is profitable provided it submits to scripture secular enlightenment is profitable provided it submits to scripture the moment you allow any kind of enlightenment and advancement to downplay scripture in your life you're not being transformed you're already on your way to perdition and destruction it's only a matter of time this may be an uncomfortable statement but please pay attention because for some of us right now we have found ourselves in environments and cultures and nations where it is an embarrassment to love God it is an embarrassment to be passionate about God the moment you bring the idea of God and your passion your heart for the kingdom it looks as if you just came out from a cave can I tell you this this is the generation that is vocal about the things of God regardless how we rise regardless how we grow will let the nations know that he's king of kings and Lord of Lords whatever will require me leaving Jesus to get I'm not interested whatever will require me leaving the ideas of the kingdom to get is not necessary in my life everybody say transformation contend for superior belief systems listen to me our fathers have written books and there are materials they have written be careful what you get into your mind because the Bible says for as he thinketh in his heart 
he says so is he the reason why there is a, a a gradual decline in our nation in our society is because you see the bible said this sign shall follow them that believe that means everything following you is a report card to what you believe if failure is following you there is a belief system that is attracting it if weakness and mediocrity is following you listen carefully these signs shall follow them that believe let me use these people i have a few minutes watch this all of you do me an assignment please just follow this gentleman wherever he's going i know you are standing to help me can you do that for me now watch this call this prosperity call this victory call this favor call this speed are we together now hold this bible my friend lift it up this is what he has exalted as his mindset and the bible tells you that if you believe he has taken this word and he has put it in his mind please go he's this is on a journey to destiny look at what is following him in honor to what he's carrying are you seeing that whether it is in america whether it's in asia following him they are not following him they are following what he's in his mind now hold on if he now decides to replace this with something else let's assume he has replaced the word of god with something else stop following him watch this now he's wondering where are you and they said no we didn't come for you we came in honor of this that you have understand what i'm teaching you and you will find out why certain things are not following you we came from backgrounds where what is following us is defeat jealousy failure and you are saying why is my life like this why is it that everybody does not like me no it's not you that they don't like there is your something about your belief system that is attracting these things just because you went to school does not mean your belief system just lives like that here's what the bible says it says let this mind be in you philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 let this mind the word let there means permit this mind one more time so this gentleman comes for the pastor's seed conference and while the word of god is coming he rededicates his life and makes up his mind that once again and here they come again he leaves this conference with favor following again these signs this is someone's prophecy oh i'm acting out your prophecy that these signs these signs now watch this so if you are the devil and you want to destroy this man how will you destroy him if you are satan you will never be satan but if you were satan and you want to stop all these blessings from following this man what is the one thing you need to do are you seeing why satan is after your mind so he bombards you from social media to internet to all kinds of things it is not you he's fighting he wants to fight the place of the word of god so your prayer life dies your word life dies no more passion for bible study you carry a christian book and throw it away and sooner or later the heritage you got from your parents when you met them you met favor when you met them you met power but right now you ignore god and the signs no longer follow you listen to me some of you were exceptionally intelligent because intelligence was part of that when you loved god when you now left him and replaced him with something else your mind became full of all kinds of information intelligence stopped following you now your life has been plunged listen i came by the power of god to tell you drop everything that has been misleading you pick up the scripture it may not look like you are changing and others will laugh at you when you pick this your world you see our world is an arrogant world even when they are failing they act like they know what they are doing do not let people influence you out of this pattern you have been given our fathers today kept this when their world was saying you are wasting your time they said i rather waste my time on jesus look what he's made their lives become today never let anyone make you believe that loving jesus and living for him and staying with scripture makes you a failure 
I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, the Bible says, is not worthy with the glory. Oh, there is a glory that is coming. I tell you, let them laugh. They will bow their heads in shame. Let them laugh while you pray in the spirit. Let them laugh while you study the word of God. Let them laugh while you read quality materials. Let them laugh while you are mentored by the fathers. Inevitably. Hallelujah. Are you learning? Let's demonstrate it one more time. Listen, as I'm walking them round, start adding the list of the things that must follow you. Favor, lifting, speed. Oh, it must follow me. As my mindset is transformed. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. My mindset. My mindset. I replace secular humanism with scripture. In the name of Jesus. And all these things keep following me. Hear me. Brothers and sisters, let me challenge you. Please look up. Please look up. After this conference, I'd like you to go back to your library. Go back to your phones. Delete any junk there that does not sustain the power. Listen, don't feel offended though. I came here because I love you. Junk music, junk information, junk stories. You used to love God, but right now you read things that pollute your mind. You find out that you can't think straight again. Send it out of your phone. Don't say everybody is doing it. Send it out of your phone. And say in the name of Jesus, I have somewhere I'm going. And devil, you are a liar. You will not stop my destiny. Can I tell you this? While you are doing this, the devil will make you feel like you are cheated. But I acted this so that forever you will remember. That every time you are throwing the Bible, is more than the Bible you are throwing. You are throwing your breakthrough. You are throwing your lifting. You are throwing your longevity. Every time you pick the Bible and say, I'm not interested, you do greatness. You just threw victory. You just threw power. You just threw influence. But every time you pick your Bible, hallelujah, it's not only your Bible you are picking. You are saying yes to victory. You are saying yes to lifting. You are saying yes to power. You are saying yes to long life. My time is up. Let me give you one more. Is someone having that understanding? Let's do a quick recap. Sit down. Sit down, please. Keys to influencing your generation. Key number one, help me. You must have an encounter with the God of the Bible. Those who are just coming, God bless you. Good to see you. Please do well to write. An encounter with the God of the Bible. Number two, you must be transformed. Yes, have a global view, but have a scriptural approach. Have a global view, but have a scriptural approach. Have a, you should be aware of the realities in your world. Have a global view. Expand your mind scientifically. Expand your mind sociologically. Expand your mind in the area of your profession. You should be vast and understand your world. But when it comes to decisions, let there be a spiritual immigration officer in your life called scripture. Everything must pass through that immigration office to be approved in your life. Are we together key number three are you ready for this the third key if you want to influence your generation you must be extremely valuable extremely valuable please write it down and then look up you must be extremely valuable what does it mean to be valuable your value is a measure of your usefulness your value is a measure of your uniqueness. Can I tell you this? You know this by now. The world will never have the time to give attention to and celebrate anybody who is not a contributor to the betterment of people's lives. You must be extremely valuable. 
this is where I respectfully challenge Africa I challenge Nigeria extremely valuable you know you are valuable by who is following you if nobody is following you it means you are not being a solution to anybody another word there is you must become a solution you are either a solution or you are part of the problem you want a generation to hear you whether it is in ministry whether it is in business whether it is in politics whether it's in your legal practice i want you to make a covenant with your destiny today that in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god i contend for competence i will be extremely valuable that the era of shame and reproach through incompetence is eroded in my life i made a covenant with myself that even though i am called into ministry that every dimension of my life that has to do with serving the purposes of god make up your mind that in the name of jesus christ i will be valuable are we together please look up say after me in the name of jesus one more time shout it say in the name of jesus i reject mediocrity prophesy say i reject mediocrity i reject average in the name of jesus hear me many of you here in school please go back to school not just to get certificate get knowledge our world today celebrates the solution that comes by reason of paying the price to be valuable the world rewards you based on the value that you bring you have to understand this many people live mediocre lives let's honor our father who has come bless you sir thank you thank you thank you sir we appreciate you are we together make up your mind to be valuable can i tell you this it takes focus to be valuable and when you are ready to be valuable you have to tell yourself i'm not going to pamper myself i will burn the midnight candles when others are sleeping you should be awake as a man of god make up your mind that you're going to be competent make up your mind that you're going to be a solution they took they said this about jesus all men seek for thee all men you've heard me say there are things that when you have only your tribesmen look for you there are things that when you have only the poor look for you there are things that when you have only the rich look for you there are things that when you have only your age mates look for you but there are things when you have all men all men all men i came here to challenge you do not pamper yourself discipline yourself to be valuable i made up my mind that in every area that the lord would have me serve his purposes i will be exceptionally competent it's a covenant that i've honored till forever be valuable apostle god is calling me to be an exceptional lawyer then don't be mediocre if you are mediocre you will be angry you will be jealous you will fight those you see all this anger and jealousy around comes from people who are frustrated by their own incompetence every time you are exceptionally valuable you realize that there is space for champions planes don't fight in the air traffic only happens on land Are we together there are a few times where you'll be in the air and then you sight another plane it has to be a, a an area where the, there are a lot of flights there is space for you but can i tell you you have to make up your mind here at this conference one thing is needful lord what is the area you are calling me to if it's ministry give it your best if it's business give it your best how do you know you have arrived when you are serving kings until you begin to serve kings don't stop it is only when you serve kings that you receive the reward of kings see yet thou a man diligent in his business the bible assures you that you will not stand before mean men he will stand before kings there are no mistakes with greatness you want to see the glory of the lord the ever increasing glory upon your life please shake up mediocrity and stop giving excuses go back to the drawing board 
Apostle, I'm an architect, but nobody seems to like me. It's not true. There's no such thing as nobody seems to like you. You are not valuable enough to serve kings. Go back. Do your homework. When you are competent, you see, excellence is a language. There are people who can speak it. I'm not Yoruba right now, but if somebody comes, most of you hear Yoruba, if they speak Yoruba, immediately you will hear because it's your language. There are people whose language is excellence. When you speak it, they will talk back to you. Is that true? How do you know you are competent? By who is placing a demand on you. Whether in ministry, in business. Kings must be able to place a demand. Look at the kind of people that come all over the world. To this campground. They come in honor to God. But truly they come in honor to value. They come in honor to results. The world does not have time to invest in stories. If you are not producing results, forget about influence. Are we blessed? Extremely valuable. Can I give you two more keys very quickly? Key number four. What is the fourth key if you want to influence a generation? Understand the power of strategic relationships. Please write it down. You must understand the power of strategic relationships. The command be fruitful also means be relational. Because the only way to be fruitful, everything multiplies through relationships. It takes a relationship between a husband and his wife to have a child. It takes a relationship between you and the Holy Ghost to birth ideas that change nations. Can I tell you this? Greatness is a product of synergy between like minds. You must connect to your kind to be able to sustain the force and the momentum that helps you to rise. The Bible says it is not good for man to be alone. He's not just talking in terms of marriage alone. He's saying when you are alone in destiny, it is a risk. You will need the corporate networking of like-minded believers. Write this down if you can. The community living, kingdom community living, is the key to sustaining kingdom values kingdom community living that means you are not alone if you feel pain and it looks like the devil is trying to bring down your prayer life pastor leke is here you can reach him and say sir can you pray with me what betides a man who does not have any support system in his life you will not go far in this kingdom we rise based on the relationships do you know why I'm teaching you this so that you begin to make strategic friends with yourselves here many people say I am a Christian but all their friends none of them love the Lord none of them share the same values can I tell you if there are five people in your life who are unwise you are the sixth person if there are five people in your life who are lazy you are the sixth person if there are five people in your life who are you are the average of your relationships love is a command relationship is not and pick your friends with intention there's no such thing as we grew up together if they are not going where you are going sustain the courage today to unashamedly edit your relationships i can love you from a distance god is the god of all flesh but when it has to do with destiny relationships there are three kinds of relationships give me five minutes three kinds of relationships very quickly number one there are general relationships you go to buy bread you meet someone you buy bread from him you go to fix your shoe you go to fix your you meet people everywhere and the bible mandates to honor all men general relationships number two there are seasonal relationships relationships that come into your life for a season the key to maximizing these relationships is discernment to be able to know what it is that God has for you to receive within the allotted season. Are we together? But the highest and the greatest of all these relationships is called destiny relationships. Write it down, please. Destiny relationships. When you lose this one, you have lost a lot. Don't leave this conference. Pastor Seed, listen to me. You must have at least two friends that God will give you here. Who become your prayer partners. Who become people you can confide in. 
you can tell them look i've observed that in the last one week something is wrong with my spiritual life and the person does not bring some antichrist statement to you you know he can pray he said i know it's an attack remember what we learned your gist is scripture your jokes are scripture your discussions are scripture it's not fanatism it's growth can i tell you this please don't say everybody likes me this is an evil world learn it on time be intentional about choosing friends when they ask you who are your friends you should be able to say it immediately and intentionally so 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 person thank god and he say, oh no 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 these are good people they influence your mind because you see when you have relationships you submit your thinking to your relationships relationship is a risk you submit your mind you program your mind to be open towards their influence finally and then we pray the last key to influencing a generation is that you must be unusually anointed psalm 89 verse 20 you must be unusually anointed we're wrapping up now please pay attention psalm 89 verse 20 is it projected please read with me we're reading to 24 ready one to read uh-huh the enemy shall not exert upon him nor the son of wickedness afflict him and i will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him 24 but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him and in my name shall his horn be exalted please look at me do you know what the anointing is the anointing is god's ability to produce his dimension of results the anointing is not oil no these are all mediums you want to serve the purposes of god in your generation you want to experience the latter glory ladies and gentlemen brothers and sisters in christ hear me you must be unusually anointed acts chapter 10 and verse 38 peter was speaking in the house of cornelius and this is what he had to say he said how god anointed jesus of nazareth is it in your bible look at the extent to which god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power and he went about it takes the anointing to do good it takes more than a heart of sympathy it takes the anointing to do good this is why our father in the lord can stand and look at you and say in the name of jesus be blessed it's more than a statement there is a heavy anointing that backs that statement can i tell you this the world that we live in would require more than a sincere heart to change this world you need the power of the holy spirit unusually anointed i have tested of the anointing of the holy spirit and i continue to pray that god will anoint me the more because with the anointing of the holy spirit you can do much for the kingdom hear me you cannot do ministry without the anointing you cannot do business end time kingdom business without the anointing you cannot be a professional without the anointing there are gates waiting to destroy your destiny psalm 66 verse 3 says say unto god how terrible art thou in your ways it says through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to thee there are demonic forces who will destroy your life if they have room people can laugh between the open and in the secret they will be more than glad to destroy you it takes the immunity that the anointing brings we have a minute or two to pray and listen to me brothers and sisters you are going to pray for spiritual empowerment that god will anoint you for this task i taught you four things today please stand on your feet if you can that the key to serving the purposes of god 
and influencing your generation i am hoping that by this brief charge that as you are released from after this congress many of you will spread like the foxes of samson and you will go and cause havoc in the philistines camp that as some of you are going from north to south to east to west you are carrying this fire number one an encounter with god number two a superior belief a mindset an illumination that is referenced from scripture global in view but scriptural in your approach and then number three that you are extremely valuable make up your mind that you'll be a solution make up your mind that your generation will not look at you and ask what do you have to offer for us and then finally through your ministry or the ministry of the holy spirit that that engracing can come upon you even jesus when he walked in the flesh he depended on the holy spirit and the anointing that came from him are you ready to pray please turn these four points into a prayer request and lift your voice now please begin to pray please begin to pray I desire oh God an encounter with the God of the Bible an encounter greater than religion an encounter greater than church an encounter greater than just the show and the form of godliness I need a genuine encounter I've known him as my father's God I've known you as my mother's God I've known you as my pastor's God but I want you to be my God number two pray Lord walk on my mindset I obtain grace to sustain a superior belief system the kind of belief system that can allow me host your grace your power an orientation that is global in view in scope but scriptural in approach I'm tired of being limited and being mediocre in my belief grant me the grace to be global in my view to be global in my scope but to be scriptural in my approach then number three i am a solution provider lord place something upon my life that will cause the nations to place demand of I refuse to escort men in the path of destiny and walk around shadow boxing let there be something in my hand something in my mind that will cause the nations to come and place a demand of and then number four anoint me afresh anoint me afresh go ahead and pray anoint me afresh anoint me afresh hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord i want to pray over your life i'm sure that god will grant another grace another time and then we can have the time to pray for the sick and all of that but i want to pray just one prayer i came here with a burden in my heart and i've been able to share some of it but the one prayer i want to pray for you right now is or let me say two in one if you allow me I just feel stirred in my heart that there are people here who are saying apostle as I listen to you I knew in my heart that I need Jesus I don't want to sit down lying saying my father is a pastor my mother is a woman of God some of you have never truly made this conscious decision you've been around church you've been around the things of God Judas was around Jesus but he didn't save him and some of you are saying I want to rededicate my heart to the Lord I remember giving my heart to Jesus but for some reason my life has gone haywire and it's as it is right now I need a rededication I will stand in the spirit and grace of our father and I'm going to count one to three wherever you are don't wait for anyone to be the first unashamedly I want you to come and stand here right now one let's celebrate them as they come two run like there's fire on the mountain come and stand before Jesus unashamedly
are you still celebrating Jesus for a harvest? Are you still celebrating Jesus for a harvest? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now listen to me, please. I salute and I celebrate every one of you. If you are yet to join them, please come out and stand. Do that quickly. Don't say, my friends are here looking at me. Forget about all that. Stay. This is Jesus. This is a matter of destiny. It's not a matter of my friend, my this. No. No. You were not born with your friend. You are not going with your friend. Listen to me, my precious people. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. The Bible declares, for God so loved the world that he gave. His giving was proof of his love. He gave Jesus to reconcile us again to the Father. And for some of you who have gone far, remember the prodigal son. The Bible says he came to himself and he said, how many hired servants does my father have? And I'm here feeding with the swine. He said, I will arise and I will go to my father. And I will say, father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I am not worthy to be called your son. Take me as one of your servants. But as the father saw him afar off, he came and embraced him, put a robe of honor and a signet ring back to his hands. Please lift your right hand high above your head to the heavens. And I want you to say this after me. Mean it from your heart. Jesus is here. You're not reciting a poem. Say after me, Lord Jesus. One more time, say it again. Say, Lord Jesus. I believe in you. That you are the son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe. That you rose again for my justification right now I accept you into my heart as my Savior as my Lord as my King I receive eternal life into my spirit I receive the abundance of grace even the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life. The power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From today, I live for Jesus and I serve him all the days of my life. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, we thank you for this harvest. Thank you because every one of these precious people is standing here representing the generations and the people the territories that you are sending them to serve your purposes they have made this decision for you and lord i pray by the power of the holy spirit that in honor to this decision let the life of god be administered to their spirits i commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the holy spirit and in the name of jesus i pray that you will live victorious Christian lives. From today you go forward ever and backward never. 30 years from now if Christ tarries, you are still standing and on fire. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Someone direct me. Okay. All of you, please this way, just follow our brother there waving the placard. Let's celebrate them as they go. Celebrate them everyone. Please celebrate them celebrate them now let me just speak over your life in the name of Jesus Christ I declare I stand in faith with our father in the Lord and I decree and declare the grace that gives encounters may that grace come upon you now yeah. believe the prayer that I'm praying number two the grace to sustain a superior belief system that is global in view but scriptural in approach receive that grace now yeah. number three every dormant gifting every ability that is lying dormant within you 
that needs to find expression to serve the purposes of the kingdom i stretch my hands and i declare over you grace to bring it out and serve your generation number four and finally i stretch my hands right now the kind of anointing and grace that your destiny requires for you to be able to rise above these systems and to live a supernatural life and fulfill your assignment supernaturally in the name of jesus christ may that anointing come upon you now the heritage the heritage of superior graces that are upon this ground upon our father in the lord and upon all the fathers that represent the move of god within this territory i stand in agreement with them and i place that grace upon you by this prayer i declare upon your life you will not fail pastor seed every seed grows therefore i declare grow every seed multiplies and becomes a tree therefore be great and you will never be small i pray for the executives of this platform grace for you as you lead god's people to understand what it takes to be great for the next generation may you experience that level of glory in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ my honor and my thanks again to our father in the lord baba deboye and then pastor leke thank you thank you i love you pastor c the lord bless you the lord increase you in jesus name dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. the face of development lord grant me the discipline